Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Wembley Stadium. It's on, it's here. The rematch, Carl Froch versus George Groves for the WBA and IBF, Super Middleweight Championships of the World. Sponsored here by Betway, of course, live on Sky Sports box office. It gives me huge, huge pleasure to welcome you all here today for what I believe is the biggest fight in British boxing history. First of all, a few thank yous to, of course, Wembley Stadium, to Sky Sports for making this all happen. This is a dream come true as a promoter and as a fight fan. We look at the great nights in British boxing history, Peterson versus Doyle, Cassius Clay against Henry Cooper, Ben Eubank. Well, we've got another one here, but now we've got one even bigger, Carl Froch versus George Groves. We're live on Sky Sports News, and I'd like to welcome Adam Smith from Sky Sports to say a few words. Thanks, Eddie. So we meet again. As soon as their thrilling first battle came to that controversially quick conclusion, everyone in boxing hoped the rematch would land almost as swiftly. Huge social media reaction, 82 days of hard negotiating, and then there was the fight for the venue. Some 19 days after that, we were delighted to announce the deal with our national stadium. For May the 31st is one of the most enticing nights we've had in over 25 years <coughs> of boxing on Sky. The last spectacle at the old Wembley Stadium, which had seen Clay Cooper and Bruno Witherspoon, was of course when Frank finally lifted the world heavyweight title at the fourth attempt on an emotionally charged evening in September 95. Ricky Hatton's greatest hour might have come against Costa Siu, but he did tempt 30,000 fans over to Vegas and then a homecoming crowd of some 57, 58,000 maybe at Manchester City. We've had Mike Tyson in Hampden Park, David Hay in Hamburg, even Kevin Mitchell at Upton Park, and most recently last summer, Luke Campbell's homecoming outdoors in Hull. There's something special about a stadium fight. There's something unique about Wembley. And there's something in the air when Carl Froch and George Groves get together. Their warrior mentality, their diverse personalities. Sometimes you need a dance partner, however much you detest them, to bring out your very best. Frotch Groves, too, has people talking on the streets like no other fight I remember domestically in over a decade. It's the perfect rematch in the perfect setting, and it should be one of the standout sporting events of 2014. We'll be bringing you all that, all the build-up, <clears throat> live and exclusively, and the event itself on Sky Sports box office. Enjoy it. We will. Thank you, Adam. As tickets now are on sale, the initial 60,000, which we believe will sell out almost instantly, we'll give updates further for the media during the period today, with an ability to go to 80,000, the biggest boxing crowd post-war, we're here to break records and believe, we believe we're going to do so. Firstly, I'd like to introduce, to say a few words, the challenger from Hammersmith, George Groves. Thank you. Well, this is it. Everything for a reason. So, we're back <coughs> here, Eddie. We've got the rematch. We've got it in Wembley. Carl Froch has been mandated. He, ha he now has to fight a fight he doesn't want to take, a fight that he knows he can't possibly win. It was a stonewall robbery the first time. Everyone knows it. The IBF know it. That's why they've instated me as mandatory with an immediate rematch that is now taking place. It brings me great joy that this is happening because otherwise this is not a fight that was going to take place. Cole Froch has um, openly said that this is not a fight he can take, that, that it's a fight that he can't get up for. It's a fight that he didn't <coughs> want. He's going to struggle for motivation. He wanted to go to Vegas, I believe. He, uh, he wanted to fight Chavez. He didn't want to take this fight, but he's been forced to take this fight. I think that's round one to me. Round two is because we're sitting right here in Wembley, in my home city. Why, why is this? Eddie, we're, we're here. Carl's got to travel down to London now. He's got to come all the way down here to my hometown and fight in front of my fans. This will be, this, be a national event and, and people will travel for it, but this is my home crowd. Maybe that's fate. I don't know, maybe. Everything for a reason, I'm sure. So, 
No, Carl, that this is perfection for me now. Everything I do in this will be for a reason. There's not one thing that will be chance. Whether it be on fight night, whether I choose to hit you, it's not going to be whether I choose to hit you in the head or the body, it's whether I choose to hit you on the chin, whether I choose to hit you on the nose, on the ear, in the ribs, on the elbow, wherever I want, Carl, that's where I'm going to hit you. Understand that. Understand that now. And I wish you the very best in your training camp because it's all systems go for me. The first fight, I've said it before, we went in believing. Now we go in knowing. And more importantly, Carl Froch knows. He knows there's nothing he can take from the first fight. Absolutely nothing apart from the gift that he was given in the ninth round by Howard Foster. He had nothing. He and he was totally spent. This time round, he's going to have to go into camp and look to his trainer, um, Rob, who I've got a lot of respect for, but Rob's somehow going to have to figure out what he can say to Carl that's positive from the first fight because there's nothing. I don't have a clue how they're going to prepare for this fight. I wish him the very best. He's certainly going to need it. Thank you, George. And uh, straight over to the four-time champion of the world, IBF and WBA super middleweight champion, Carl Froch. Afternoon, everybody. Um, wonderful turnout. Thanks for coming um, to what looks to be one of the biggest fights in British boxing. As Eddie's already said, I'm going to echo a few things he said in the last 10 years. Um, fantastic stadium. Wembley doesn't get any bigger than this. The platform for boxing and for, for myself to showcase my skills on this platform. I'm just so, so excited. Um, Sky Sports box office and Wembley Stadium, it doesn't get any bigger than that. So to be given this opportunity, I'm sure George Groves feels exactly the same. It's a wonderful opportunity that we have to take with both hands. Um, I'm excited that um, you know, this opportunity has come along at this time of my career because you know, I've been a pro over 10 years and to fight in an outdoor event uh, this magnitude, the last time I can remember was watching Ricky Hatton against um, whoever was boxing at the Man City ground. It was over 50,000 fans and I can remember looking over my shoulder and seeing a carpet of people and thinking to myself, wow, this, this is amazing. Will I ever get this chance to fight in front of this many people in an open air event for my career? Probably not, but it looks like now I am doing and that for me is very, very humbling. I've had an unbelievable break over Christmas and New Year with my family. I've got a chance to meet my newborn baby girl, Natalia. She was born just before the Mikhail Kessler fight, actually. Um, so I didn't get much time to spend with her. And then straight after the Mikhail Kessler fight, I went into a dance tournament, which we all know about. And then I was from that straight into the first fight with George Groves. Um, so there was a six and seven month, maybe an eight month period there where I was just busy, work. Busy, busy. I didn't have time. So Christmas and New Year for me, I've had some bonding time with my baby girl. I've spent some family time. I've been at home changing nappies and night feeds. Let me tell you, that's overrated. But I've enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I've missed the gym. I've missed boxing. I've missed hitting the bag. I've missed listening to Rob and, you know, working hard on the, on the road runs. And that's, that's bad news for George Groves because I'm now excited and looking forward to getting back in the gym and getting in the ring on May 31st and doing the business. The last time, in fact, I felt this mentally switched on, focused, happy and confident was the build-up for the Luchin Butte fight. And we all saw what happened there. So, like I said, I'm just enjoying it so everybody else should enjoy it. And Wembley Stadium, wow. Thanks, Carl. We're going to hear now from uh, the trainers from, from each camp, firstly. Paddy, I'd like to invite you to say a few words. Eddie, thanks. I don't have too much to say, though. May the best man win on the night. It's a fight everyone's looking forward to. It's, uh, it's good that it's getting done. That's it. Thank you, Paddy. And uh, Rob, and Rob, a few words about the fight. Yeah, obviously it's going to be a massive fight. It's, it's, obviously it's going to be a massive fight. It's going to be huge for British boxing. Um, I mean... You're only as good as your last fight in British boxing, and Carl will be the first to admit he wasn't great in his last fight. Having said that, he finished like the Carl we know, and, you know, seven, eight, nine, the, the fight took a change, and 
Carl Frotch looked very strong and, and on his way to success in round nine. Um, but that's by the by. The fight's on. Um, it's a fight Carl was going to take again. It's a fight I was going to take again for Carl. There was a lot of to-in and throwing. This happens in the sport. But make no mistake about it, Carl Frotch was going to box George Groves again. It wasn't about being mandated. It wasn't about anything. It's about him deserving a rematch, which we agree with, and Carl de deserving the right to try and finish the job second time round. So um, it's going to be a great fight. It'll be great for British boxing, and we're going to look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a couple of other quick thanks. Obviously, we know... This fight uh, on sale at 12 o'clock today through C Tickets. Thank you to, to our official ticket provider, of course, Betway, uh, Lonsdale, HBO, our partners. This will be live uh, across America and also around 100 countries around the world. Uh, this is a huge event, and thank you to all those involved. We're going to go to the floor now for some questions. I believe uh, Sky Sports News have some for us. I think what any, I mean, everybody's entitled to an opinion on that fight, and we've heard numerous opinions, and it's to me it's 50 50 split. Um, what I think about the stoppage is totally irrelevant. All I know is it was controversial, and that's why we're here today, and that's why the rematch is happening. So let's enjoy it. It's not going away, it's happening May 31st, and there's going to be no question marks over the stoppage this time, let me tell you. Yeah, it would have. Um, it's all it's all down to ifs and maybes, and Carl's trying to do his best to bring up these ifs and maybes. Um, Rob, as well, is, for want of a better word, lying through his teeth. I mean, seven, eight, and nine. He lost Ooh. the seventh. He 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 could have given a share of the eighth, and that's me being on Carl's side. And he got buzzed at the start of the ninth. He landed a couple of shots in the ninth, and the referee jumped in prematurely. That was the only bit of any success Carl had in that fight. And this isn't the fight that Carl wants to take. We, McCracken said straight after the fight in his post-fight press conference that it wasn't a fight they wanted to take back then and yet it's a fight they want to take now after what they know and what they saw the first time this is perfect for me as I say I, I don't believe in fate but I do believe in everything for a reason maybe maybe I had to go through that that, that stonewall robbery up in Manchester just to bring just to bring the titles back to, to London and Change, change of guard to uh, the younger blood here in London on the biggest stage at Wembley Stadium in what I hope will be um, <coughs> the biggest fight in British boxing history. And, I, and, and I'll be the first to pat you on the back, Eddie, for, for your hard work. It's fantastic for it that it is here at Wembley. Um, logistically, it looks impossible, but for some reason it's happened. You know, Eddie, Eddie's, Eddie's, Eddie's grafted to get it here. I don't know, maybe Eddie looking to the future you know, looking to build me, maybe wants to work with me here in London. So, um, out with the old, in with the new, that sort of thing. And I, ironically, Eddie, it was, it was about a year ago that you um, te tweeted saying that this fight was medically unsafe. And um, I pulled you on it at the time, but you know what, you, you might just be right because come, come May, this fight may be medically unsafe. I know, um, I know Paddy's uh, expressed his, uh, you know, his concerns. He's actually put a letter into the board, I think, making sure that Carl Fudge is fit to box because um, <coughs> it took one hell of a night. Uh, it took one hell of a beating up in Manchester in November. And uh, I, w I wish him the very best. Carl, are you fit to fight? Is it medically unsafe? Well, actually, I've got to um, go through my medicals, so I can't officially <coughs> answer that yet. Fingers Ed, crossed. Ed is looking worried. <laughs> I've, I've, we have an annual medical, we have an annual brain scan, we, we do what we need to do and um, I think we all hope that when we fight everybody comes out of the ring very, very safe. You know, I don't like to talk about injuries and being medically not right because you don't want to tempt fate and you don't want to talk about um, what can be a very, very dark side of boxing. I'm fit and strong and ready. At the ripe old age of 36, I will be ready. May 31st. Question marks, there won't be any. Looking forward to it. You should all enjoy it. It's going to be a fantastic event. You should all enjoy it and enjoy me while I'm here. I, I echo Carl's words. It will be a fantastic, fantastic event. And everyone who tunes in will be on for a great journey and a great ride. And 
I hope everyone gets involved and and summed up well, Carl. You know, he's not here for long. So. Guys, any further questions from the floor? put that question so eloquently um, I had a game plan going into that fight that I was going to do what I was going to do and Carl Fox was going to walk onto shots that he wouldn't be able to recover from in the first round he walked onto a shot that put him over I didn't for one second think that I needed to become anxious or desperate or this was my only chance in fact I just thought let him carry on walking onto these heavy shots for the rest of the night which he did which he was doing. I didn't need to stop him there and then in the first round. No, Carl Froch has got a good chin. I mean, there's no need for me to become desperate, as I just said. So I took my time, let him walk on to many more heavy shots and at worst case, win by a landslide on points. Um, <coughs> the referee prevented that from happening. Unjustly. That's why we got the rematch. I think what went wrong for me in the first fight, if I'm going to make any, um, put any blame on anything, I think mentally it was very, very difficult for me to be on my A, a game and be totally up for fighting George Groves. You know, it's, it's difficult as a human being to, to fight somebody who's, who's not boxed anybody ranked in the top 15 in the world and everybody's telling you this is a mismatch, you're going to wipe the floor with him. You know, after a while you start listening to it and maybe you take a back seat, not physically, I'm always in, in the best of physical shape as you know. Um, you've seen me finish like a steam train time and time again. But mentally last time I was not at the races, I was not there. And it was almost humanly impossible to be physically switched on for the first fight. It just was based on fact and based on results of, of previous fights. So, you know, I'm not going to make that same mistake again. I'm at fault for doing that and I almost paid dearly for doing that. Um, so, you know, for me to now be in the best physical or best mental state of mind I've been in since, since I can remember in my life, um, that spells trouble for George Groves because um, lightning doesn't strike twice. It couldn't have got any better for George Groves and it couldn't have got any worse for me and I still won. So I take a lot of confidence from that first fight and I'll be taking that confidence into the rematch. There you go. So you, you Colin. Wait, what? So we start a slow clap. Yeah, we've, um, we're already in discussions with the British Boxing Board of Control. I feel, and I think that most people feel within the camps, that the, the officials for this fight should be neutral because of the magnitude. And by neutral, I mean outside of, of, of British jurisdiction. Um, I think it's too big um, you know, to leave anything, any blame, any controversy. We had the controversy of the first fight. And you know, I do feel for Howard Foster, I think he's a top-class referee. And I think he made a decision that he felt was right on the night. Um, many believe that he wasn't right, um, and he'll have to, to live with that throughout his career. But you know, I think the British Boxing Board of Control have top-class officials. George has made it very clear to us that he doesn't want British Boxing Board of Control's officials for this fight, and we're talking to them. Obviously, they can have uh, the supervisors involved in the fight, and, and we'll see how that unfolds. But um, you know, I feel as though there's too much on the line to perhaps uh, you know leave that to chance. Carl talks about lightning striking twice and it doesn't happen. I think he's right. I think he's right. Hal Foster won't be refereeing that night. And lightning won't strike twice and you won't be gifted the gift he was given the first time. So other than that, it'll be much the same. I don't hate no one. No one I box, certainly not. I nothing, Carl. Nothing the same as all my opponents. I don't like him. I don't dislike him. Um, I just go about my business. Um, if we wasn't boxing each other I probably wouldn't want to sit in a room with him too long but other than that I feel nothing towards him I don't need to Like I've said um, for me to, to perform at my best I need to be on my mental A game and hate doesn't um, involve being mentally prepared for anything in life including boxing 
So, um, you know, just, just watch a relaxed, cool, calm, and composed Carl Froch do the business at the end of May. I don't really have an opinion on that. I mean, George Groves behaved how he's behaved. He's, he's done what he's done to, in, in his own mind, get to where he's got. So fair play to him. Let him carry on doing what he's doing. I've got absolutely zero interest. I speak to Eddie Hearn. Um, I speak to Rob McCracken, my coach, and we make decisions. The decision's been made <coughs> to fight on May 31st on this what's promising to be an unbelievable event. So just look forward to it. Any further questions, guys? Okay, we're going to move these tables out of the way um, and we'll have uh, photos with the guys and the, and the first head-to-head. -head. Thank you very much for your attendance, May the 31st. We'll see you there. My little boy's trying to do this. <laughs> it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. <laughs> Which way? Which way? <laughs> to me. To you. To me. To you. And Carl Frotch, who, as you can see, refusing to look at the challenge They went head to head today, almost, to try and solve this one. <laughs> Guy Sports, go on. Watch the fight on Guy Sports. Don't miss it. Yeah, cool. Bye bye. How you doing?